Well, there's a science mystery in, in the shape of landscapes, both here on Earth, as a tool to understand what environmental conditions were there, what happened when, but then especially applying to other worlds, Mars, the Moon, Venus, the surfaces of asteroids, icy satellites, places we're now becoming exposed to as we try to unravel our local neighborhood in the universe. So at the scale in which those landscapes provide clues to tell us what happened and whether environments might have been habitable, a good place to look for life on another world, take Mars. That really excites me because it's, it's kind of forensic, it's mathematical. So the first problem is, how do you measure it? What, what do you need to know? Trained ge geologists on Earth can look at something and say, oh yeah, river ran there, the stand came in, blah, 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 and there's a story and you go, wow, how did they know that? I mean, it sounds like Sherlock Holmes does landscapes or CSI does rocks. Um, so one needs to be trained. So how can you break that problem down? What is it about the shape and the texture at different scales that tells you about what's going on? The same way the clues at a murder scene would or whatever. And one can break it down that way. And in many cases, it comes down to geometries and math and geometry and simple measurements of shapes of things at very fine or different scales to build the information, the database, the data set to solve the problem. And nowadays, that works on Earth and we're applying it to Mars. Um, one of the things I've done in my career is apply that method as a way of remote sensing planetary landscapes to understand how the shapes of planets, their, the landscape forms we see, got to be the way they were. And when one compares Earth and Mars and Venus, we see different assemblages of landscapes. And so by measuring their topology, what's up and down at different scales, one can unravel how they might have gotten there. And on Earth, we can tell, we have other clues, we can go touch them, hit them with a rock, drive over them. But on those other worlds, we're at the hands of robots or spacecraft in orbit. So we have to do it that way. So what that, imagine, what that involves is measurement, the mathematics of measurement. We make some of the measurements that I've been working my whole career on using laser instruments that measure the distance from a spacecraft to the ground to inches at, as the spacecraft moves miles per second over the ground. And you put that together and say, how the heck can I get anything out of that? But thanks to math, we can put together, solve a few equations, and boom, now we have the landscape. And now I know that that corrugated landscape was where water once was versus another one where sand blew, and I've now started to build a picture of environment. So I'm a, I'm a student of the landscape using higher order math and measurements to build a picture that then I cast back and forward in time to understand the path, past and also to predict the future. And on Earth, it's important to have predictive ability. Is that big storm going to flood New Orleans or the Barrier Islands or California? Um, and on Mars, can I tell when the water was there long enough to maybe provide an environment that could have been conducive to life? Would that be the first place to go look for the right rocks to interrogate with other methods? So that's the thought process. Break the problem down. What do you need to know? You know, what are the fingerprints? What are the clues? How do you measure them? And so in many cases, it's the engineering of, me of measurement systems. It's the mathematics of how you, how you put together the me those measurements. Sometimes it's statistical. We don't know. There's lots of varieties. Mother Nature is infinitely creative. So we have to sort of classify. That one is this most of the time, and that one is that. And again, it's a detective work problem. And that's really what science is. Creative detective work to get to how and why things work in the bigger context of fundamental questions. At NASA, we ask questions like, are we alone? Is Earth life the only life out there? Many of us think, no way. but. We have to demonstrate progress in that question. What's our destiny? Where are we going as a planet, as a state of the universe, as a solar system, as a piece of a galaxy? Where are we going? What's the destiny function? And how do we get here? How did the current state of Earth in a solar system, in the Milky Way, in this universe, get to be the way it was? And what are the grounding fundamental laws that Mother Nature used to make this time and place and state? Those are big problems, so you break them down. And so science, detective work with tools, often mathematics, good writing to describe the results, because if we don't convey them, not too good, and, and to communicate them, um, both verbally at meetings, on the web, 
Now with social media, lots of new mechanisms to do so. So, I mean, science is alive and well.